Lesson 12.3a, Exploring Compound Probability. A simple event is an event consisting of only one outcome. Rolling a number cube with the event consisting of the outcome three. That's a good example. A compound event is an event that is made up of two or more simple events. So flipping a coin and rolling a number cube or rolling two number cubes even flipping two coins. A compound event can include events that depend on each other or are independent of each other. Dependent would be a bag contains three pink gems and two blue gems, and we pick without replacing the gems for the next pick. So I could put my hand in the bag and pick a gem, and then I don't put it back. I pick another gem. Well, when I first picked, I had a chance of picking three pink or two blue. And after I picked one, now I've only got a chance of picking two pink or two blue. That's dependent. The second time is dependent on what happened the first time. For independent, the bag contains three pink gems and two blue gems. And we replace the gem after each pick we have an equally likely chance of picking one of the five gems, where in the dependent one, if we pick one and don't replace it, our outcome will be out of four gems, not five. The outcome of the second pick depends on the first pick. For independent compound events, the occurrence of one event does not affect the probability of the other event, such as flipping a coin and rolling a number cube, or flipping a coin and spinning a color spinner, or flipping two coins, or rolling two number cubes. One outcome doesn't affect the other outcome. When we flip a coin, there are only two possible outcomes, heads or tails. When we roll a standard number cube, there are six possible outcomes, one, two, three, four, five, or six. When we spin this spinner, there are three possible outcomes, red, blue, or yellow. We can make a list of all possible outcomes for flipping a coin and spinning this spinner. We can get heads, which will be H, tails, which we'll assign as T. We can do R for red, B for blue, and Y for yellow. And the outcomes can be heads red, heads blue, heads yellow, tails red, tails blue, tails yellow. There are six possible outcomes for this compound event. There's two possible outcomes for the coin, heads or tails, and three possible outcomes for the spinner, red, blue, or yellow, and two times three is equal to six possible outcomes in all. If we repeat this compound event a number of times, we can use tally marks to record our results in a table. We can repeat it 20 times, that would be 20 trials. So here we have our coin for heads or tails, and we have our spinner for red, blue, or yellow. So let's say we did that. Let's say we repeated the trial 20 times, and these are the outcomes. So based on the data in this table, the compound event with the greatest experimental probability is heads yellow. We have six tally marks. There are 20 in all. That means it's 6 twentieths, which can be simplified as 3 tenths. We can write it as a decimal as 0 0.3 or as a percent as 30 percent. The sum of the row totals, this is 13. We have 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's 13. And we have 6, 7 here. So the row totals, that's 20, and the column totals, here we have 3, here we have 8, here we have 9, that equals 20. So the row totals are the same as the column totals, and that's equal to the number of trials, 20. And this is the denominator of the experimental probability ratio, 20. Now you can try this one at home. 
we can flip two different coins 50 times to find the experimental probability of them both landing as heads. We can make a table and use tally marks to record each compound event. So because we have two different coins, it's going to be a compound event. Each coin is a simple event. And we can put tally marks here for how many times it occurs. And it's going to be a total of 50 times. That's 50 trials. And remember, the sum of each row, this plus this, will equal the 50 trials. And whatever the column totals are, this plus this, will equal the 50 times for the 50 trials. And that will be our denominator when we write it as a ratio. I wonder if you did this, how many times you would get both coins landing as heads. We finished the first part of 12.3. We're going to move on to the second part, calculating experimental probability of compound events. I hope you have a wonderful day, and please join me for the second part of the lesson. Bye.